Hi everyone, it's Mike here. I'm outside in the garden today. Why, you may ask? Well, do I need an excuse? Look at that sky. Hardly a cloud in sight. It's a beautiful spring day, but I do have an excuse. Over at Journal 52 this week, the prompt is outside in. So it's looking at aspects of what you can see outside and then creating a journal page based on that. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So this is a photograph I took in the garden a few minutes ago, which is the inspiration for my page today. So I'm starting off with my large dilutions journal, and I'm going to gesso over a total double page spread. When I'm happy with that, I'm going to heat set it and make sure everything is completely dry before I move on to the next stage. Okay, so this is a TCW stencil, which is called Bricks, and I'm using the really heavy, carvable molding paste to put through the stencil because I really want some deep texture of that brickwork. I'm just going to add uh, some sections of that brickwork across the top section of my double page spread. I'm not too bothered about getting it completely even because I want it to look like some rustic brickwork. It's a messy process, look I've got it all over my fingers. Now because this embossing paste is really really thick uh, and has a really nice texture to it, it does take quite a while to dry. So I will set the heat gun on it and I will just make sure that I'm tidying up some of the edges, particularly on the creases of the page there, you can see what I'm doing now, uh, and then I'm going to give it a really really good heat blast. Okay, so when I'm happy that it's completely dry, or as dry enough to work with, I'm going to use some of this tissue paper, which I believe is from Paper Mania. Um, and I'm going to tear out all the organic elements from it. So when I mean organic, I mean no bicycles, nothing like that. It's all um, insects and animals. So I've got dragonflies, butterflies, moths, uh, a bird and a bee, I think. I'm just going to place them out on the page where I want them to, to sit, just to shuffle things around until I'm happy with it. Okay, now using the Galleria Matte Medium and I'm going to stick all of my tissue paper down and I'm making sure that I push the brush edges into the, um, the crevices of the brickwork because I want that texture still to show through the tissue paper. Okay, giving it a heat blast. It shouldn't take too long to dry because it's only tissue paper and it's only matte medium. Um, completely flat, so it only takes a few seconds or so. And then I'm going to trim off around the edges of the pages any excess pieces that are hanging off the edge. Okay, so now starting off with peeled paint, 
I'm going to just put some dobs all over the page, uh, make sure I've got a nice even coverage, and then I'm going to pull out a wet wipe or a baby wipe, and I'm going to apply the paint using that wet baby wipe right the way across the page. Now it does look like a bit of a hot mess to start off with, but um, it it does blend quite well and as it starts to dry you can move it and start removing bits of paint and blend it all together and it does settle down a little bit. At the minute it just looks like a complete mess. But trust me, it won't in a moment. That's the beauty of the distress paint. You can apply it and even as it's starting to set, you can still remove it um, with a baby wipe and move it around until you're really, really happy with it. I normally take paint off, then put it back on again, then take it off again, then put it back on again, then take it back off again, then put it back on again, quite a few times. Okay, now that I'm happy with it, I'm going to give it a heat blast and then I'm going to bring in the vintage photo as if by magic. And I'm going to add that to the top of my page and do exactly the same thing. See the texture of those bricks really really comes into play now but I want to accentuate them even more so I'm going to do a little bit of a trick in a few seconds I'm going to add some of the vintage photo paint right across the top and then with a spritz bottle I'm going to activate it and get it to run through and down all those creases look at that this is where your heart starts skipping a beat it a good title for a song that So I've got the heat tool out and I'm going to be heating it as I'm actually dabbing it and adding more paint and taking paint away because um, I want to make sure that the heat tool is actually pushing the, the liquid paint into the areas that I want it to and I'm just adding extra bits in if I need it and taking it away and at this point my camera died which is why you didn't see me wipe up the drips. Okay so coming in now with the darker colour of forest moss and just showing you the picture again that was the inspiration so you can see exactly what I was doing. Those curly fronds are um, inspiration for the ferns that are growing in my garden. And you can see in that photograph there you can see the brickwork behind the, the ferns. My ferns are um, representations, they're not botanically correct. I just wanted that, that um, impression of the, the, the curly fronds. thickening up some of the lines and tidying them up a little bit before I add in on the next colour. Okay, again that was the vintage photo paint, so I'm just coming in now with a touch of brown and I'm just going into those edges and filling out the, the swirls a little bit more uh, and just fleshing them out a bit. In case you're wondering, the video is speeded up to three times its normal speed. Okay, just adding a little bit more green, just um, where I think it's needed, just 
touch up over the top. Um, because the distress paint does dry pretty quickly because it's acrylic, uh, you can add colour pretty much straight on top of a colour you've just laid down without too much mixing. Okay, now that was the Distress Paint Walnut Stain. So this is a darker brown to the vintage photo and does have hints of green to it too. So I'm just adding in some darker areas of those fronds there, just to give it a little bit more depth and texture. Okay, this is the mode Lawn. So I'm just going to add in now some highlights of um, some of the, the, the foliage. So I'm just dotting that foliage in. So, because it looks like it's all dotted if you look at the photograph of the, um, of the ferns again, because they, they come out from the sides of the stems. Um, you literally only see the, the dots on the ends. And yes, I am heat setting it as I'm putting them on because they're only small dots, so they will dry almost instantaneously instantaneously. There you go, put your teeth back in Mike. Okay, using a Sharpie poster paint pen, I'm just going to add some more doodle dots just around those fronts, just for a little bit of highlight and a little bit of um, contrast really, because the greens and the browns are quite dark. So I just wanted to add in some extra little bits of white and some little blobs just to add a bit of interest. Now I do get some larger blobs that I didn't really like. So because it's poster paint and because I'm using acrylic paint and it is a non-porous surface, if you don't like it, you can just get a baby wipe and just wipe it off just like that and then do it again. Okay, using the food ball, I'm just going to go in there and just add some black lines within those doodle dots. Okay, so the gesso comes back out again now. I'm going to mix that with a little bit of water and add some splashes to our page. Now, I started doing this and as I'm flicking the paint down, I'm thinking, where's it all going? It's not going on the page. And then I looked up and found that I'd splashed all of my Distress Ink storage um, and my mobile phone completely splattered with paint. And none of it went down, all of it went up. So I've switched brushes. Yeah, it's more like it. I've got just tidying up a little bit now and then you can see me wiping off all the paint from my mobile phone. Okay, coming back in with the peel paint and I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that too and then add some green splashes across the brickwork too, just to add a second layer, a second colour to that, those splatters. Oh, and for once, I'm actually wiping and adding the excess paint to another page in my art journal. I get accused of wasting paint. So there you go, ready for another page. So this is the Tim Holtz Chit Chat stickers, and I've just selected one of, well, I've actually got four, um, trying to find a sentence out there. But I eventually went with the four words, nice, simple message, and it, all it says is, There you go. Dreams grow from wishes. Okay, so here I'm taking uh, one of the baby wipes I used earlier on that's still got some of the vintage photo paint on it. And I'm just dabbing that over the top to blend that into the brickwork. So it looks as though the words are actually on the wall. I'm just giving it a little bit of a heat blast just to ensure that the paint is 100% dry. It doesn't take too long.
and then as always my final step is just to stamp the date and sign it and then the job is finished there's another finished page in my archive